Saturation can make your footage stand out or completely kill it. And this is why, in today's video, I would like to show you how to master saturation in DaVinci Resolve 20 the right way without going overboard. I will show you the tools that pro colorists use to adjust the saturation. But before we dive into it, I've just released a brand new tool for DaVinci Resolve, Master Blend Power Grade V2. It is designed to make your grades more filmic with every note explained. And there's a detailed video tutorial, an ebook, and the powerful RGB crosstalk DCTL that adds that rich depth to your footage. So if this sounds like something that could help you to level up your work, you can find a link to it in the description below. But now let's dive into saturation. And we'll be working with this lock clip that has already been converted to Rec. 709. And I have just performed here basic color correction using my power grade master blend. This is before and after. I haven't created any sophisticated look here, as today we are focusing solely on saturation. So I will open my primaries. And obviously you don't need to have my master blend power grade. You can just create your own node tree. But this is what I use most of the time as it makes my work easier. And now, when adjusting saturation, I like to look at the vector scope or the waveform. And we can actually expand our scopes here. So then we can move them around or move them to another monitor. And this allows us to monitor multiple scopes simultaneously. And we can also click here to bring up more scopes like this. But for me, these two is enough. So now we'll start from the standard, the most obvious saturation slider in DaVinci Resolve that's here. And also, as you can see in my power grade, I use the HSV saturation, but we'll come back to it later. So for now, let's create another serial node and let's call it saturation. And now let's have a look at how our saturation slider works. It basically increases and decreases the saturation of the whole clip uniformly. But we can also clearly see that the result is not overly pleasant. Let's maybe increase it up to 70. Okay, which is not that much. But when we look at our grade now, this is before and after, we can see that the reds look oversaturated and they also got brighter and the skin tones also look quite artificial although we haven't increased the saturation that much and this is because the standard saturation slider in DaVinci Resolve uses the RGB model which increases not only the saturation but also the brightness so when we look at the vector scope before and after we can see how this trace is expanding but then when we look at the waveform before and after, we can see that the brightness also increases, which results in this imperfect outcome. So when we already have a lot of bright hues in the clip, the saturation slider will not handle it very well. So now what I'm going to do, I will grab a still, and then this still will appear in my gallery over here. So we'll be able to compare this result with other techniques in a bit. Now I'll also disable this note and I will show you a more advanced way of adjusting the saturation. And here we will be using the HDR saturation. So let me label my note. And now let's go to our HDR wheel. And I was explaining multiple times in my videos and in my course how the HDR wheels work. So I'll not spend too much time on it, but basically HDR wheels target seven different regions separately. So we have here black, dark, and shadow areas. And then we have light, highlight, and specular highlight. And then we also have the global adjustment. And today we'll be using the global adjustment to adjust the saturation of the whole clip. So we'll be using this saturation slider over here. So I'll crank the saturation up quite a bit. I will exaggerate a little so it's clearly visible on YouTube, like this. And this is our before and after. And I can already see that this result is way more organic than the one achieved by using the RGB saturation slider. But let's compare these two results so you know what I'm talking about. 
So in order to do it, I will go to my gallery and I will click on the still we have grabbed before and I will select grab still. And now we can use the wiping mode over here that will allow us to wipe our still against our current result. And look at this. Look what's happening. Look at the red over here. So the one on the right is the RGB saturation and the one on the left is the HDR saturation. And it's very easy to notice which one is more pleasant. And now let's compare the orange. Okay, so this is because the HDR saturation uses more intelligent color model. So when we use it, we don't really increase the brightness of the hues, which is giving us this way pleasant, more dense result. But this one is still not my favorite way of adjusting the saturation. I want to show you a few other ways. So now let's disable this node too. And now we will have a look at the color boost. As there's also a little bit of the confusion, what is the difference between the saturation and the color boost? So to explain this simply, we could compare color boost to vibrance, which means that it targets muted or low saturation areas more than highly saturated ones. So in theory, color boost should give us nicer, more natural result. So let's check how this works. I will push it up to 20. And let's do the wipe again. Okay, so the difference is not that prominent, but we can see that here the red was targeted slightly differently as well, and it looks better than the one that was achieved using the basic saturation. So now let's move to my favorite way of adjusting the saturation, which is the HSV saturation. But before we do it, if I had to compare all of these three types of adjusting the saturation I have just mentioned, the basic saturation would be at the very bottom. I personally never use it. And also now you might wonder, why does it even exist? Well, it exists because it's the most traditional way of adjusting the saturation. It has always been a part of the software, but professional colorists never use it, I would claim. Then the color boost would be the second. I think it can work okay when we want to very quickly adjust the saturation and also when we only need a gentle adjustment. And my number one would be the HDR saturation, as it gives us the most organic result. But now moving to the HSV saturation, the HSV saturation uses the HSV color model, where H stands for hue, S stands for the saturation, and V value stands for brightness. And this saturation control also boosts the color intensity without affecting the brightness, similar to HDR saturation, and helps to preserve natural skin tones. And now, in order to use it properly, I've already done it, it is set up correctly in my Master Blend Power Grade. If you purchase my Power Grade, it will already be there. But if you have never used HSV saturation before, first, you'll need to right-click on the node and change the color space from Use Timeline to HSV. And then you'll need to right click again and deselect channel 1 and channel 3, leaving only the channel 2 on. And this way, now we are able to use our gain and gamma master wheels to adjust the saturation. So when I push the gamma wheel, I'm increasing the saturation in the midtones. And when I push the gain, I increase it in the highlights, which gives me a lot of control. So I will play around with these controls. This is maybe too much. Let's decrease the saturation using gain. And this is before and after. And now let's also grab a still from the HDR saturation, as I want to compare this result with the HSV saturation. And let's wipe it. And look at the difference. HSV saturation, because it gives us more control, it also gives us even more dense and deep result than the HDR saturation. So HSV saturation is definitely my go-to if I want to increase the saturation of the whole clip. But now, let me also show you the best way of adjusting the saturation if we want to be more selective with our hues. So this time, we'll use this Sony clip it has also been converted and adjusted. So again, let's create here 
an additional node. And the most obvious way of increasing the saturation selectively is by using curves. And now we will focus on the hue versus saturation curve that adjusts the saturation of the selected hue and also on the hue versus luma curve that adjusts the brightness of the selected hue. And now if you want to learn more about curves, please join my course. You can also find a link to it below this video. So let's start from the saturation. And here, let's say that I want to manipulate the saturation of the orange hue. So I would just select it in my clip like this. And now we can use this newly created point to manipulate it. And we can also see that we are affecting skin tones as well. This selection is not very precise. And now I'll also manipulate the yellow. And then let's try green. Well, this one is not really picking up, but let's check our before and after. But now let's also manipulate the hue versus luma curve. I want to make this result look more pleasant. Now it's too bright. So I will decrease the luminance of the orange and yellow hue. And this is before and after. And this method again uses the RGB color model. So again, it's quite outdated in my opinion and very basic. So now again, let's grab a still and let's move to the best tool in DaVinci Resolve 20 that adjusts the saturation selectively. And this tool is obviously the color slice. And there's a video on my channel where I'm explaining the color slice. So if you want to get more in-depth knowledge about it, please check out the link that I will tag in here. So here we have seven different regions we can adjust separately. And then this slider over here adjusts the saturation of the selected hue. And this one over here adjusts the density. So let's do a similar adjustment. I want to adjust the saturation and the density of the skin, orange, yellow, and green. So I will just play around with these controls until I get the satisfying result. And now let's compare it with the result we have got using curves. So let's do the wipe again. And look at this. The color slice result looks way better, more organic and more dense, giving that nice filmic result. Thank you so much for watching my videos, guys. I hope that you like them. If you do, hit subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment below. See you soon.